life, eternal life. It's not about what you have. It's not about what you do. It's not about who you are. It's only and completely about Jesus. He's doing all the right things. He's got money. He's doing the, he's being a good guy, right? Following the rules. Uh, but he has a, a one question that he's not 100% sure about. He's, he's pretty sure he's on the right track, but he's not sure. How, how does he earn heaven? How does he uh, get to heaven? Is he on his way? Is he doing the right things to be able to get to heaven? So uh, he approaches Jesus with boldness and confidence and asks Jesus, uh, Jesus, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And his response, Jesus' response is, well, follow the commandments. So the guy thinks, awesome, I'm doing that. But then Jesus has a follow-up. Jesus' follow-up is, uh, but you lack one thing. Go and sell all that you have, give it to the poor, and then come and follow me. The man is taken aback by this a little bit, a little bit shocked, in fact, that Jesus would say that his, his success in this world has to have something to do with his eternal life, right? At least that's what he's thinking. And so, having not gotten the answer he wants, the rich young ruler leaves Jesus distressed and downtrodden. Uh, this, of course, is a retelling of Jesus' interaction with the rich young ruler, which we looked at uh, more in depth last week. Um, but our passage for today, from Mark chapter 10, is, is literally what happens right afterwards, right? So, the rich young ruler is leaving, and Jesus turns to his disciples to unpack what just happened, right? And so it's all really one story together, last week and this week. And so it's also fitting that last week's sermon will flow into this week's sermon a little bit as well. And so as a reminder, last week, Pastor Matt uh, talked about how this rich young ruler was obsessed with being good, doing the right thing, being successful in the life, um, rather than being obsessed with Jesus like he should have been. And we too fall into this trap, right? We uh, become obsessed with good, being good, doing the right thing, being successful in this life when, when we should be obsessed with Jesus. Uh, now, Pastor Matt doesn't, didn't say this last week, but uh, essentially the, the rich young ruler is, is trying to use his worldly success to, to get into heaven. And we may sometimes think in that regard and try and do the same things in our life too, but the reality is the two don't really go to hand in hand, right? It's by being obsessed with Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit that we receive the gift of eternal life, not by being successful in the world. Uh, said another way, uh, in fact, it is impossible for us, for you, for me, for us to do uh, anything to enter into eternal life, to earn eternal life, to be given this. We, we can do nothing um, to, as human beings to receive eternal life. It's all because of Jesus. And so uh, praise be to God for our words of wisdom from today, which comes from Mark chapter 10, verse 27. Jesus looked at them and said, With man it is impossible but not with God, for all things are possible with God. For all things are possible with God. Those are our words of wisdom, right? So it's impossible for human beings to have eternal success, eternal life, um, from our own work, from our own volition, from our own success. It's only with Jesus that we can have eternal life, eternal success. Life, eternal life, it's not about what you have. It's not about what you do. It's not about who you are. It's only and completely about Jesus. Let's pray. Lord, make these words to be your words and not my own. Open our hearts and minds what you have to say to us this day. In Jesus' name, amen. Life, eternal life, it's not about what you have. It's not about what you do. It's not about who you are. It is about Jesus. Uh, we're going to unpack that phrase, if you will, going forward um, this morning through this sermon today. And we're going to do it by looking at those three phrases, those three parts, right? What you have, what you do, who you are, and looking at how those things lead to success in this world, but then uh, breaking that down a little bit to show that they aren't going to lead to success with Jesus. 
And then wrapping it all up with how Jesus gives us eternal success, eternal life. And so first, it's not about what you have. A worldly example, an example of that, is really kind of all of us. If we live in the United States already, right, I'm sure you've heard it said, this living in the United States makes you more wealthy than majority of the world. Even living in poverty in the United States, in the poverty line, uh, you would be a middle class or even upper middle class in most every other country, right? And so just living in the United States, we have success um, on a worldly scale, especially if you look at it with wealth. Uh, even being able to decide what meal you're going to have next, right? So rather than having to eat whatever you have, right, but you're able, able to actually make a decision over the, what the meal is going to be, that alone makes you more wealthy than the majority of the world. And so right away we have success. But uh, we could also look at it on a more narrow scale in the United States as a whole, and money drives everything, it seems. It's all about money, and so having a lot of it means you're going to be successful. At least we think that way pretty quickly and easily. You may have heard the terms like, I just want financial security, right? I don't want to have to worry about bills. I want to know that my family is going to be okay. I want to know that, um, you know, I'll have enough money to just live the life I want to live, whatever it might be. But money drives everything. It's all about money. I know I've said that before. And I've said I wish it's not at all about money, but it, it seems like it, the world is. And so having a lot of it means you're going to have success. That's essentially what I'm trying to say here, at least in this United States in the world. And so sure, wealth, money, possessions, that can lead to success in the world. But it's impossible for it to lead to success with Jesus. In fact, it's not good enough for Jesus because we still fail. We still come up short. We're still not good enough. And so frequently we become obsessed with our possessions and our money and that kind of thing when we should be and are called to be obsessed with Jesus. Jesus is quite clear about this in Mark chapter 10, verses 23 to 25. And Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, how difficult it will be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples were amazed at his words. But Jesus said to them again, children, how difficult it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. Essentially, Jesus is, Jesus is saying here, you cannot buy your way into heaven. Right? You cannot buy eternal success with Jesus. It's not about that. right? You cannot buy eternal success with Jesus. And it's so easy to get obsessed with our possessions, with our wealth, that we turn our way from God easily. And that, that's what Jesus is saying here. You cannot buy your way into heaven. In fact, uh, so, so yes, right? Wealth can lead to etern or to earthly, sorry, to earthly, worldly success, but it's impossible, completely impossible for it to lead to eternal success, eternal life with Jesus. Only Jesus does that. And so life, eternal life, it's not about what you have. It's not about what you do. It's not about who you are. It's about Jesus. It's not about what you do. I'd like to introduce you to someone. This is Adam Thielen. He is a wide receiver for the Carolina Panthers. But before the Carolina Panthers, he was this guy, a wide receiver for the Minnesota Vikings, yes. Um, and I'm going to tell you just briefly his story. So Adam Thielen uh, grew up in Detroit Lakes, Minnesota. Um, and ended up going to college at a Division II school, Minnesota State University in Mankato, Minnesota. Um, while there, he, he played well, like he did well, but he was there to play and played football on a $500 scholarship, right? So his odds of making the NFL were very, very low. Division II, $500 scholarship. Uh, upon graduation, he's planning to just take a normal job, uh, but is able to convince the Minnesota Vikings to uh, give him a tryout as part of a rookie tryout camp, right? So he's not good enough to get drafted out of college. He's not even good enough to be just given an undrafted free agent contract. Uh, he has to actually try out um, and, it, and it had to be invited to this tryout. So he's able to get this invite and works really, really hard and uh, ends up getting an invitation to training camp that year uh, and uh, does at least well enough in training camp to make the practice squad at the end of the year, right? So 
That's an NFL paycheck, but um, he's on the practice squad. So he works really, really hard that entire year, does a lot of hard work, um, is, keeps his nose focused on football that entire year. And, and then the next year he's in training camp once again and is able to make the team as a special teams player. And then the next year he makes the team again and it slowly through hard work, a little bit of talent of course too, but hard work, he works his way up until he's one of the top wide receivers on the Minnesota Vikings and even in the league. Um, in 2017 and 2018, he made the Pro Bowl. So, hard work, some talent too, but hard work, dedication, uh, doing the things led to his success, right? We love these kinds of stories, right? These underdog stories, these American dream stories, right? If I work hard enough, then I'm going to have success. And I'm sure we all can share stories of this in our own lives, right? I worked hard at this thing, and so I got successful at it, or was successful at it, right? We love these kinds of stories. And so sure, hard work, dedication, those kinds of things certainly can lead to earthly, worldly success. Still not good enough for Jesus, though. Jesus demands more, and we can't meet it. We fail, we come up short, we're not good enough still. And, we, uh, and one of the ways we're not good enough is being more obsessed with hard work and dedication, that kind of thing, than, we, than being obsessed with Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit. And this is pretty clear from the Bible as well, that um, hard work's not going to get us too far. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. Pretty well-known Lutheran verses these are. For by grace you have been saved through faith... And as this is not your own doing, it is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. Right? It's not about what you do. Right? Sure, working hard, those kinds of things can get you success in the world. But it's impossible for those things to lead to eternal success with Jesus and his death and resurrection for us. It's not going to lead to eternal life with Jesus. And so life, eternal life, it's not about what you have, it's not about what you do, it's not about who you are, it's about Jesus. It's not about who you are, and by who you are I mean where you come from, uh, who you know, who you're related to, that kind of thing, right? I'm sure we can all think of many examples of people that are successful, like celebrities or whatever, um, partly because of who they're related to, who their father is, who their mother is, etc. Uh, at least they um, were beginning to get success because of it. Here's a number of them. Lily Collins is a successful actress who's the daughter of Phil Collins. Uh, Miley Cyrus, especially her early career, is all because she's the daughter of Billy Ray Cyrus, right? Um, Bronny James on the far right, son of LeBron James. This one might be the most controversial of the three that I've talked about so far, right? But it seems that he at least got drafted higher because he's the son of LeBron James, and he may not have gotten drafted at all if he wasn't the son of LeBron James, right? And then the royal family, right? If you're born into the royal family, successful, right? At least in the world's eyes. Um, any number of people, I'm sure we can name many more as well. Now, this, these kinds of stories we don't like quite as much, right? We're like, ah, they're only successful because they're related to someone famous, or they're related to this person, or related to that person. Uh, but we do this too. The famous saying, it's all about who you know, right? It's all about who you know. That's what'll get you success in a job, a promotion. Uh, that's what even could get you like an, a really great discount on your heat pump, right? It's all about who you know. <laughs> it's all about who you know. Thank you for laughing. I appreciate that. Um, thank you, Paige. It's all about who you know, right? So, yes, who you know, who you're related to, how you're connected certainly uh, can lead to worldly success, but it's still not good enough for Jesus unless the person that you know is Jesus, right? And it's not good enough for Jesus, though, unless it's Jesus that you know. Come up short, and we find ourselves being obsessed with you know, our background, where we come from, who we are, rather than obsessed with Jesus. And the Bible talks about this too. Jesus is, is actually quite clear about this. Luke chapter 14, verse 26. If anyone, this is Jesus talking, by the way. 
If anyone comes to me and does not hate his own father and mother and wife and children and brothers and sisters, yes, and even his own life, he cannot be my disciples. My disciple. Essentially what Jesus is just saying is me first, right? I'm first. I'm number one. And all the rest of that stuff is, is fine and good too, but Jesus number one. Right? It's not about who you are or where you come from, what, who your family is, that thing, that kind of thing. It's about Jesus. And so, um, sure, right, who you know, who you are related to can lead to success in this world, but it's impossible for it to lead to success in eternal life with Jesus, unless the person who you know is Jesus. Right? Life, eternal life, it's not about what you have, it's not about what you've done. It's not about who you are. It is always, only, and completely about Jesus. It's about Jesus, right? And so there's any number of ways that we can have success in this world, but there's only one way that gives us eternal success with Jesus. It's impossible for us as humans to do anything uh, to earn eternal life. Praise be to the Lord for our words of wisdom. It is not impossible with God, with Jesus, because of what Jesus has done. And so it's quite fitting that the time when this story that we've just been talking about from the Bible happens is as Jesus and his disciples are on their way to Jerusalem for the last time. Not long after this, Jesus will enter Jerusalem on a donkey with shouts of Hosanna and praising him as king. But then less than a week later, he'll be arrested and tried and convicted and hung on a cross to die. And he'll die for our sins on said cross and rise again three days later to eternal and new life for us. This, that reality, Jesus' reality, what he has done for us, that's what gives us eternal life. Not by our own work, but by trusting in his salvation for us by the power of the Holy Spirit at work in and through us. That's where eternal life comes from. Not our own work, not what we have done. The Apostle Peter is clear on this in one of his, um, one of his sermons after, the, um, after Jesus has risen, arisen into heaven after his resurrection. Uh, the Apostle Peter says this. He says, and there is salvation in no one else but Jesus. For there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Saved Only Jesus, right? That is what we are called to. We are called to, by the power of the Holy Spirit, be obsessed with Jesus because he did the work for us. Right? And so maybe you're successful in the world, right? Maybe things have led to a successful life. Maybe you're not successful at all. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter for our eternal life. Jesus is who matters. His work, his death, his resurrection for us, by the power of the Holy Spirit, and to trust in that reality for us by the power of the Holy Spirit. Be obsessed with Jesus. And so life, eternal life, it's not about what you have, it's not about what you've done, it's not about who you are, it's always, only, and completely about Jesus. So how do you have earthly, worldly success? Well, there's a variety of things, any number of things that lead to this. How do you have eternal success with Jesus? Only and always and completely because of Jesus and his work. It's okay to have earthly success, but don't be obsessed with it. Be obsessed with Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit. And so to wrap things up, I have a question for you all to consider this week. How are you going to be more obsessed with Jesus this week? And next week and the week after. How are you going to be more obsessed with Jesus? Because life, eternal life, it's not about what you have. It's not about what you've done. It's not about who you are. It is always and completely about Jesus. Amen? Awesome. In Jesus' name, amen.